Is it possible that the Bible is more sex positive than the horror genre? Yes, the words of the Apostle Paul are often cited to support Christian concerns about sex. Yet, alongside Paul's warnings against sexual immorality, you'll find something like 1 Corinthians 7, 3-5, which encourages frequent mutual self-giving as a crucial component to a healthy, fulfilling marriage. In the Old Testament, sexual desire is part of God's good created order in Genesis 2, 25, as well as an intoxicating blessing in Proverbs 5, 18-19. And then there's the entirety of Song of Songs, which celebrates the communion of two lovers with occasionally explicit details. Details that are sex positive, even if you read that book as an allegory for the love shared between God and humankind. Discussing Song of Songs in Sex, God, and the Conservative Church, Christian therapist Tina Shermer Sellers describes it as, quote, one of the most ignored books in the Bible. She adds, This text is about experiencing God's presence and essence through a passionate, awe-inspiring, and boundless love. It is an erotic message of union in which a merging of love, God's love and human love, melts into an experience of the God of love. This is a new idea for many Christians, particularly those who have not been exposed to a Jewish understanding of the Song of Songs and who have been taught to fear sexuality, sensuality, desire, and eros. There it is, fear. This fear of sexuality, rational or not, biblical or not, drives the drama in so many horror movies. Often in horror, sex equals death. Any eroticism that is experienced is swiftly, gruesomely punished, especially if the perpetrators are horny teenagers and the movie was made in the 1970s or 80s. Yet, we could also go all the way back to 1942 and Cat People. Directed by Jacques Tourner under the auspices of famed horror producer Val Luton, Cat People slinks across the screen, curling amidst shadows and shadowy desires. Simone Simon plays Irina, a Serbian immigrant to New York City, who falls for marine architect Oliver Reed, played by Kent Smith. Though Irina has sexual urges, she brazenly invites Oliver into her apartment alone on the afternoon of their first meeting, she fears following through on them. Even after they marry, she begs Oliver to have patience, worried that consummation would release the, quote, evil inside me. Separate beds it is. What evil is Irina referring to? While undergoing analysis with the doctor played by Tom Conway, Irina says she suffers from a curse of her home country, that of, quote, cat women, women who in jealousy or anger or out of their own corrupt passions can change into great cats like panthers. The doctor puts a more existential spin on the situation. He says, quote, there is in some cases a psychic need to loose evil upon the world, and we all of us carry within us a desire for death. You fear the panther, yet you're drawn to him again and again. Could you not turn to him as an instrument of death? While making her confession to the doctor, Irina rests on a couch in his office, inky blackness all around, except for an oval of light on her face. Earlier in the film, During that afternoon date in her apartment, the room grows darker and darker as the sun fades, Irina and Oliver's figures becoming silky silhouettes. The movie's signature sequence, when Irina in panther form stalks a romantic rival while she goes for a night swim at an indoor pool, is a nearly abstract display of shadows and reflections. And during a nighttime confrontation between Oliver and Irina at his office, where the underlit drawing tables emit a soft glow, Oliver holds a drafting tool up as a weapon, causing a shadowy cross to form on the wall behind him. In the name of God, he pleads, leave us in peace. Throughout Cat People, sex and death take place in the shadows. Characters only survive if they stay in the pure white light.